and welcome to my blog. Uh, just a quick one this time round. Just received an email, another email on the same subject I keep meaning to make a video on and I'm in a position where I can do that now because I've got something I can use as a demonstration piece. So what it is, is they've painted uh, a car and what they've done is they've filled on top of etch primer. So they've etch primed something, they put filler over the top and they've written to me, they're a new subscriber, they've only just started watching my stuff and they saw one of my filler videos where I said not to fill over the top of etch primer and they're very concerned because they've got uh, like a big sinkage patch, like a big line around the edge of where the filler is. After they've put the paint on, it's, it's come back through. Now, uh, something that happened to me many years ago, I can't remember which car it was I was working on, it was one of my own cars uh, that I was restoring, and um, I etched primed the door, I filled it, I painted it, and it was absolutely perfect, never had an issue, and um, not a problem. Then I did the same procedure again, and I think what I did the next time round is I put a bit more on, like, I put a coat of etch primer on and maybe I thought, ah, oh, do you know what? I just put a bit more on and I got a bit more, I got a bit more thickness to it because I thought what I'll do is I'll, I'll fill over the top. I filled over the top and I 2K primed it and almost immediately I had this line appear all the way around the edge of the filler, where the filler was, underneath the 2K primer. So um, anyway, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll give it plenty of time to go off because um, I, I was kind of thinking it was like sinkage or something, which it most definitely wasn't. And it did come up sort of fairly soon as I was applying the um, applying the 2K. So uh, I left it for a couple of weeks. I blocked it down and it all looked great. I put the paint on and... Uh, yeah, I come back the next day, looked at it, and there was this line again. This line had appeared where the filler was, uh, and there was nothing I could do about it. And I just thought, do you know what? It's time to sand this lot off and start again. And this is what I did. I sanded it off, and I found that the um, primer under the filler... I can't remember exactly. It was kind of like it was still semi-soft and gummy and... The filler was peeling off in great big sheets. And I suddenly thought to myself, this is this etch primer that's doing this. So I did never do it again. I never had a problem since. So I'll just show you a demonstration in this video of why you really shouldn't use etch primer underneath filler work. This panel was shot blasted and etch primed around two years ago. So it's had plenty of time to dry out. Now the etch primer is a 1K product, meaning that it's still soluble in a cellulose kind of product, cellulose thinners kind of products, I should say. So I know there are other 1K products like oil-based products and water-based products, and those do go through kind of some kind of reaction. When they dry out, there is definitely some kind of reaction that happens. So they're not going to be soluble afterwards, but anything to do with car stuff, particularly the 1K car stuff, the uh, aerosol cans, and um, anything that's got 1K written on it will definitely be soluble again in thinners. You put thinners on it and you'll wipe it off. I'll show you what I mean. I'll turn the panel around because I'm going to leave this side as it is, but the other side I need to apply some filler, so I definitely need to get this primer off before I do that. So we're zoomed in on the panel. You can see there's a couple of small spot welds there. What I want to do is just put a tiny little bit of filler over those spot wells just to blend them in so that it's not obvious when you look at the panel afterwards it all looks lovely and smooth. So I certainly need to remove the primer from this side where I'm going to fill. So I got some thinners on a piece of tissue, nothing special about this, just standard thinners and I'll wipe the area. Now what you've got to appreciate that this has been done two years ago, so it really is completely dry. And immediately we can see that the etch primer is coming off on the tissue. It is indeed soluble with the thinners. Now I'm letting that thinners just soak in there now. Now that will just wipe off to reveal bare steel underneath very quickly. And... What you've got to appreciate is if 
I'd have just filled straight over the top of the etch primer. So we've got the etch primer with the spot welds. If I just say, I don't know, I could have just red padded that over or key to key it up slightly, although I wouldn't need it to have done that, but I could have done just to key it up slightly to get the filler to stick well to the primer surface. If I'd have done that and I filled it, I'd have rubbed it down and everything would have seemed absolutely fine. And then what of course I need to do is prime over the top of my sanded filler. Now when I prime over the top of my sanded filler, there are going to be a lot of solvents in that primer product. And what happens is the solvents in the primer product attack the etch primer and they will burrow underneath the filler loosening the contact between the filler and the panel because there is no contact because of course the filler will be lying on top of the primer then making that filler fluid on top of this primer creating an issue where the filler could actually peel off the panel because you've made it fluid by putting solvents that are in the primer product on top of the etch primer. And this is why filling over the top of etch primer isn't a good idea. I would only ever really prime over the top of an epoxy product after the product has been applied properly and also sanded and keyed well. Always make sure that you sand or key up the surface of the epoxy with 180 grit, I would have said, and then put your filler over the top. The epoxy product will have cured properly and make sure it has cured properly before you do this and then you shouldn't have any problems with this situation where things become fluid. Of course you can just apply your filler straight over the top of bare steel. That is after all what filler has been designed for. It has actually been designed to go over the top of uh, bare steel but we do sometimes epoxy the bare steel first especially on a long-term restoration so that you get that protective barrier in first then you can key it all up and then put your filler over the top and then of course epoxy prime back over the top of the filler just to seal it back up where you've broken through so you've broken through into a bit more bare steel so you could just uh, flash a, a coat of epoxy over the top of that before you put your high build primer over the top afterwards this is a 1950s indicator stalk housing that I've bought for my van. Uh, I've grafted it onto the steering column and this has been painted with epoxy primer. It's also got a 2K guide coat over the top so both products should be resistant to the standard thinners that I used earlier on the stuff that had been etch primed. So I'm going to give it a good good old rub with it and as you can see nothing's happening uh, this is because this is a chemically cured product I'm not saying for one moment that you could just leave this in a vat of thinners and walk away and not come back in an hour or so uh, you may well come back and see this all pickled up like you've just tipped paint stripper all over it but it's certainly extremely resistant to any sort of chemical attack over a very short term uh, meaning that if you were to put another primer product or paint product over the top of that um, it wouldn't soften up this material it would only kind of uh, there if you rubbed it down you would have to have that mechanical bond for the paint to bond to this product you couldn't rely upon it um, sort of etch, not etching in, but uh, softening it up um, through the solvents. So the solvents would attack the surface and soften this, soften this paint surface up again, and then they would key together uh, via a chemical bond. You would actually have to give this a thorough good rubbing down to create a mechanical bond for things to stick to this product. But as I said. You can fill over this and then you can primer over the top and then the solvents in the primer isn't going to attack um, this product.
product in that short time frame because by the time it has, it will already have started to um, evaporate the solvents out and start to cure itself, whatever you put over the top of this. I really don't want this video to turn into a review of a paint product. This wasn't what this video was all about. But what I will say is a few things about the product that I use because I will invariably get these questions asked. So the product I've used is 989 HP Body Epoxy Primer. I found this primer to be a pretty good product really but I have absolutely no long term experience of using it. So I don't know how the product's going to over many years after it's been used, whether it's going to crack, peel or anything else, I have no idea. I have found that the product is very easy to sand. I have heard that a lot of epoxy products are really bad to sand. This is pretty good stuff. Nowhere near as good as 2K primer to sand, but that's not really what it's all about. You can wet on wet the product, so you can put the product straight on top of the steel, so you put it on top of bare steel, and it acts as a kind of etch. What I mean by that is that it grips very well, providing you've made a bit of a mechanical bond first, so you've prepped the steel. I always prep the steel 80, 180, then it's good to go. A couple of coats of the epoxy primer on the top, if you're gonna wet on wet it, leave it about 20 minutes just to flash off, so that it's still very tacky, it's still actually quite wet and then I found that it's been absolutely fine to spray the 2K straight on the top. If you're going to allow the product to dry out so that it's fully cured, you will need to create a mechanical bond between the epoxy product and whatever you're putting over, it, over the top. So if you're putting 2K primer over the top of a fully cured epoxy primer, you will need to key the product up Otherwise, it will just peel off in a big sheet. If you're going to fill over the top of the epoxy product, then you will also need to key it well with 180 grit at least, and then uh, and then it's good to go. You can put it over because you're you're creating a mechanical bond uh, between the filler and the epoxy or the 2K primer and the epoxy, but you do need that mechanical bond. If you don't rub it down or key it up, it will peel off in a big sheet. Uh, limitations, a little bit unknown, like I said, I haven't had long-term experience, but what I will say is that when it's fully cured, it does seem quite brittle. So it's not going to bend and bow as well as some products would. Um, and if it's anywhere near an edge and you get it quite built up along an edge, and then you apply some pressure along an edge, you'll often find that it will uh, chip or splinter. So that's the only thing I will say about it is probably two coats is good enough to go. Well, as I always say, I hope you got something out of that and I really hope you did. I think it's worth mentioning quickly that I haven't painted professionally since 1999, but I have kept my hand in by doing my own projects, but obviously things have moved on. I give you my knowledge through experience to the best of my ability and it's honest and from the heart but it may not be 100% correct. You will see lots of people arguing with each other on YouTube non-stop about these kinds of things and a lot of this is about experience and uh, point of view etc. Uh, paint and bodywork is a vastly uh, huge subject and um, I think people make blanket statements about things that really is the wrong way to explain things like saying uh, you should only use this you should only use that and a certain product will behave only this way well a lot of that depends upon which product which products have been mixed together you know i.e a filler with a different type of primer may behave differently to another brand of filler against the same primer or a different brand of primer paint etc etc this is chemical stuff guys, you know, lots of different results happen when you throw different things, you know, different spanners in the works, temperature changes, uh, how long things are left. I have talked uh, in great detail about these things before, so I'm not going to waffle on anymore. And um, I, think, uh, I think creating a YouTube video that everyone's going to like is uh, harder to do than actually constructing a time machine that would work. So <laughs> anyway. Um, a couple of small points before I go real quickly. Um, my headlight surrounds. Right, 
don't worry, I'm getting to this very shortly. People keep asking about this. It's going to be uh, a nice little video. I'm so slowed under with things at the moment. I've got a lot going on uh, to do with YouTubes and besides um, oh, lots of stuff at work and uh, lots of different projects I'm doing on the van which I've got to do in a kind of logical order um, otherwise I'm just going to mess stuff up so that's the reason I haven't got round to those. The hammers for the hammer competition, I'm only going to give those away in the metal shaping videos because it's really nice to use that hammer in the video and then give that hammer away so the person that wins the hammer most likely it's been used by you know by me in that video so they can sort of add that you know thought into when they receive that hammer so that's why i only give those away in those competitions is there anything else yeah uh, the sound in some of my videos has disappeared this is because i've tried to make a few online changes to the live videos that are already up and running uh, one of those it not all of it but one of the issues is i use some music that i ask permission to use and then the music's been since released and caused me a copyright issue of course i could fight this kind of thing but i can't be bothered so it's easier for me just to do away with the music altogether i use the youtube's online editor to take the music out in some cases it was semi-successful, but in other cases it's completely blocked all the audio from the video, which is nice. So what I'm doing is I'm having to just pull those videos off completely, which is a bit heart-wrenching because some of them have got like 100,000 views on and all the links are going to disappear. I've contacted YouTube, but nothing seems to be happening. And the editor on the ones that the sound doesn't work, I've just got the spinning disc of doom and I can't do anything about it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make those videos private so in theory you won't be able to watch them anymore and then just upload a fresh copy with some new music on it and I'm trying to do it without drawing attention to it by not notifying so I've ticked the box to say don't send notifications out so if you do see a new video and you think you've seen it before you may well have done but I'm I'm not trying to be a nuisance by sending you notifications for the uh, uploads of the old videos, if you understand what I'm saying. So anyway, I've waffled on. Oh, one last thing. I'm not dissing Etch Primer in this video. It's not about dissing a product or anything like that. It's just saying about uh, using a product over the top of another product, as I was saying earlier about, you know, the incompatibility issues. So anyway, uh, that's it, I'm off. If you'd like to help support the channel, don't forget there's a link in the video description. Bye for now.